Hey there YouTube, Brandon again, and let's continue on with those electrical lessons. So in this one, we're going to start off by talking over a little bit of vocabulary kind of stuff. I know it's a little bit tough to see, but just listen through this and we'll cover a lot of it as we're drawing things again. All right, so electricity doesn't have a unit, but what it is is the movement of electrons. Um, just electrons break off of things uh, <laughs> and then travel around and it's kind of wizardry and you can get power from it. They don't have a symbol because electricity is just a thing. <laughs> uh, it's a form of energy and we talked about it. This column's just so I remember we talked about it. Okay, amperage is electrical current. So if you've got a fluid, uh, current would be like how fast the water is, or how much water is flowing. Its units are amps, and usually that'll just be an A. Uh, again, no symbol, and we talked about it. Resistance has the unit of ohms, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Going back to the fluid analogy, it's like putting a dam up. Uh, you're stopping flow, so you're stopping electrons from getting from A to B. Uh, again, no symbol. Its units, this little Greek symbol that looked kind of like an upside down horseshoe. And we talked about it. Voltage is very similar to pressure. So uh, I don't have a good way to describe that electrically. <laughs> it's, it's the difference in electrical charge between two points. Uh, very much like pressure. If you're familiar with like hydraulic head, it's kind of the same thing electrically. Its units are volts, and it's just a V. No symbol, and we talked about it very briefly. Uh, another thing with voltage, usually you would always just be talking about the differential voltage, like I said. In most cases, there's this thing called a ground right here, and that's a reference point. That is a zero voltage point. Its symbol looks like an upside down triangle made in three lines. I don't know how well you can see that. It's kind of tough. Maybe I'll zoom in on it or something. Um, and we talked about it. Uh, I'm actually going to skip down to resistors. Resistors are something that cause resistance. That seems like it should make sense, right? <laughs> so these have different values and units of ohms. And you'll see them in things like 4.7 kilo ohms or 5 kilo ohms, something like that. Its symbol is kind of a squiggly line. And those will pop up quite a bit. I don't think we're going to use one today, but uh, I'll refresh you on it when we do go to use it. So no backup to potentiometers, or we call them pots. They're just a variable resistor. So they have this thing that sweeps and can change it from zero to whatever value resistor it is. Uh, so. For example, single coil guitars usually have 250k pots. That's 250 kilo ohm potentiometers. Humbuckers would generally have uh, 500, uh, 500k pots. Their symbol, the way I'm gonna draw them, is a circle, and it's gonna have three lines. Those are where you would connect wires to, and then I'll put either a V or a T in it for volume or tone, respectively. This is what we would call a single pole double throw pot. And, um, you know, it's, it's used for things where you don't have push pull or any other kind of shenanigans going on. Double pole, double throw are a push pull. Uh, triple pole, triple throw would be things where you have even more going on. So maybe you've got, um, like on a wah pedal, you've got a Q knob and an LED and it turns your pedal on and off. You would use a triple pull double throw for that. Pickups are what we call uh, transducers. It's changing acoustic sound into an electrical signal. So a transducer just changes something from one thing to another. And that's what a pickup is. For its symbol, for a single coil, I'm just gonna draw like an oval with some dots in it. And then for a humbucker, I'll just do like a rectangle with some dots in it. 
it should be pretty obvious where there's a pickup. The last thing we've got to talk about is a capacitor. A capacitor stores energy and then discharges it. Uh, usually the way that's done is you've got these two things called conductors, so a metal plate or something, and then in the middle, an inductor, like paper or a dielectric fluid. Conductors are things that allow electricity to flow easily, so copper wire would be a good example. Uh, inductors resist the flow, but they're different than resistors. They... yeah, <laughs> we won't get into that. Um, did I say inductors? I meant insulators. Uh, insulators resist flow. And things like air and rubber are insulators. I forgot we were going to talk about that water analogy one more time, so let's talk that, and then we'll get into the diagram, I promise. We have a spigot, okay? Just like a normal water spigot. Now, on this, there's a valve, right? That valve tells your hose how much water to come out. So if we have our hose here... If I turn that valve just a little bit, I'm only gonna have a little bit of water come out. Okay, that's like voltage. The spigot handle is your voltage. If you turn it up, then you've got a lot of water coming out. Okay, the amount of water, like how fast the water is flowing, that's your current, okay? It's going faster when you've got the velocity turned up. Now, if you pinch this hose, right? So we put a little crimp in it, like everybody's always seen. That flow's gonna reduce again, and that's because we have a resistor in our hose now. Hopefully that makes a little more sense and didn't confuse anybody even more. <laughs> So let's get into that diagram now. I'm gonna draw a pickup over here. This is gonna be a single coil pickup. With six little magnets in it, right? Generally green is gonna be for your ground. So I'm gonna have a ground wire down here at the bottom. And there's that ground symbol again. And then I'm going to draw a volume pot. On this, there's going to be three leads. Okay, this first one is going to be your signal. The second one is the sweep. And this third one is typically going to be ground. So I'll go ahead and put that third one to ground. And then another thing you're going to see is from this third one, or this wire, whatever. You're gonna ground out the actual pot itself. What that does is get rid of hum. Um, yeah, so you'll always see that in single coil. And I think in most humbuckers as well. From there, I need my red marker. I'm gonna bring my signal into that top lead like we talked about. And then I'm going to take the other part of it and kick it to this sweep. Okay. So what are we doing, right? That's all great. Now we understand what's going on, what it looks like, if you're looking at one of these, but what's it doing? Well, you're sending your signal through here and then it has to go through the sweep, right? So if your volume is all the way up, you're ignoring this ground part, basically. All of your signal is going out to the tip of the jack, which is your output. The ground is the sleeve. As you turn the volume down, part of that signal is still going through here, but then part of it's going to the ground also. So what's getting sucked up is the part that you're not hearing. So if you have your volume all the way down, you're coming in here and then just going straight to ground and throwing everything away, throwing your whole signal away. Typically, these are gonna be either 250K for single coils 
or 500k for humbuckers. And when you see K, it's kilo ohms because it's a resistor, right? It's a variable resistor like we talked about. Those also are gonna be what's called audio taper. I'm gonna draw that down here. Audio taper pots are logarithmic. So let's say at you have your volume at halfway. It's not gonna be a 250 kilo ohm resistance if you've got a 500K pot. So if you're halfway, this might only be like 100 kilo ohms, right? But then this last chunk really brings the volume up quite a bit. And that might seem odd, right? Why do we use those? Well, your ears hear logarithmically, so it actually sounds more natural to us. All right, let's put that tone pot in now. With the tone pot, we're actually not gonna send the signal to the input, we're just gonna send it straight to that sweep. So this first lead, we're just gonna ignore altogether. Don't need it. You're still gonna have a ground, and I'm gonna draw it straight from the pot to the ground this time. And then in between your ground and your ground lead, we're gonna have a capacitor. Typically those are gonna be in uh, 0 0.022 or 0 0.047 microfarads. So what's going on here? Our signal's going through that sweep. And then this is what's called an RC circuit, a resistor capacitor circuit. It's a low pass filter, so it's letting all of the low frequencies through and sucking out the high frequencies. So if your tone pot is all the way up, you're letting everything um, go through, okay? So you still get those high signals. Basically, electricity goes in the path of least resistance, and if you've got a high resistance here, it's gonna say, ah, I'm gonna ignore it and keep going. Now if we turn this all the way down, because this is a low pass filter, those highs are gonna get sucked into the capacitor and then kicked out to ground, but all of the lows are gonna keep going through. So you're sucking the treble out. And as you turn that up, you're gradually allowing more and more of the higher frequencies or your treble end into your signal chain. So that's it. I mean, oh, <laughs> sorry, one more thing. There's always one more thing, right? The treble pots are usually odd or linear taper. So with that one, if you're halfway, you're actually going to be at 250 um, kilo ohms if this is a 500k pot. I think that's actually it. <laughs> Next time we'll go into a little bit more detailed diagrams, either like a Telecaster or uh, maybe something with like two pickups and still one volume and tone in a three-way switch, something a little more simple, and then we'll go from there. But this is the basis for everything. I mean, this will work. It doesn't matter what kind of guitar you have. These diagrams are gonna keep popping up. So thanks for watching. I hope this was useful. Give me those thumbs. Let me know if, uh, if this worked out for what you need. And if not, please leave questions in the comment. I will do my best to answer them. See you next time and never stop chasing that tone.